Like all great ideas in the history of civilization, it came together over pints of beer. Um, let's let's join these companies. It was that simple. You guys just said, screw it, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh... Welcome to Stout Conversations, where every week we sit down with creative thinkers in the craft beer industry and beyond. This week, our travels landed us in Denver for the Great American Beer Festival for great beer and great stories. GABF is about the craziness that surrounds sampling thousands of beers from across the country, of course. But it's also about the business behind the beer. And for us, it was a chance to chat with the legendary Sam Calagione, founder of Dogfish Head, regarding the recent merger of his brewery with Boston Beer Company, home of Sam Adams. A bit starstruck, Ken does manage to keep it together enough to chat with one of the biggest names in the craft beer industry. Okay, Sam, right out of the gate, I just got to ask, let's get it all straight for everybody. How do you pronounce your last name? It's Calagione, like full of bologna. That's how I remember it. I like that. That makes it easy for me because I'm not good at remembering things. And, and like a little bit later from now, I'm not going to remember a whole lot. So That's our job here this morning. <laughs> so we're here to uh, talk about Dogfish Head and Sam Adams, which if a lot of people may not know yet, unless you're beer geeks like us, but uh, you guys have, how did, how did this whole thing come together? Are you partners now? Or does yeah, one own we, the other? We, What's we merged on? the companies. Uh, basically, it's a merger as opposed to an acquisition because my wife Mariah and I had the equity in Dogfish. We didn't cash out. We we're all in on the merger. We just converted our Dogfish stock into Boston Beer stock. So we're now the second largest owners of Boston Beer, non-institutional owners behind Jim Cook and his family because Jim and I believe together we have uh, a more interesting and sustainable business model than if we stay separate. A uh, really complementary portfolio of what we make, what we specialize in, what Boston Beer specializes in, and really complementary culture as well. So those were kind of the reasons for the merger. Okay, yeah, I was going to say Dogfish Head is definitely more known for the creativity side. And Sam Adams, while they do a lot of creative things and, and they have a smaller side that does do some kind of small batch things yep. and one-off things, they're more known for the mainstream beer yep. drinkers. So volume. was uh, that kind of a, a way to expand in this crazy market that's yeah. kind of coming together? Yeah, and not, but in additionally, while we are craft brewers first, both Dogfish and Sam Adams, our companies have been you know, simultaneously but separately innovating beyond beer for, you know, well over a decade, you know, Sam Adams Boston Beer with cider and tea with Dogfish Head. We were one of the craft, first craft distilleries in America, not just a craft brewery. We've made meads and, and uh, fermented hybrid cider beers at Dogfish for decades. So recognizing that younger drinkers today are looking for a lot of diversity and they're probably more promiscuous in, in and out of, of craft beer and other beverages, we felt that together our portfolio was pretty holistic for what younger folks are, uh, you know, say 21 to 31 are really looking for these days. Well, and there's a lot of talk about that, a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation, but how did this thing come together? Because like the, the legend out there is that it just, you guys sat down and was like, okay, done. Yeah. And like all great ideas in the history of civilization, it came together over pints of beer. <laughs> and t Jim and I were at the uh, Extreme Beer Fest, a great beer festival run by the Alstrom Brothers in Boston. And our booths were near each other, and we were, we were pouring beer behind our booths and waved to each other and went over and started sharing beers. And I was talking about our Sequench Ale, and we just got talking about, we were like, wow, look how complementary our portfolios are. You know, what we're strong in, you guys don't really play in. What you're strong in, we don't really play in. Uh, you know, this could be really interesting if we, if we, because we collaborated like over a decade ago in a beer, but that, really the EBF of, of this year was where we said, we would had some casual conversations, but the EBF was kind of like, all right, let's tell the lawyers and the accountants, they got to just get the shit done, let's, let's join these companies. It was that simple, you guys just said, screw it, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it, you know, if you look at how short our due diligence period was for a public company or how short the time was between we announced our merger and closed on our merger, uh, a lot of really talented people at our companies came together and made, made you know, dotted the I's, crossed the T to let it happen pretty quickly. So what does this mean for the future of both companies? Are you still going to operate as two separate brands as far as... Brands, yeah, and yeah. Adams? Just as it is with all the different brands within our Boston Beer portfolio, Dogfish brand will stay unique just as the 
Angry Orchard Ciders, unique from Sam Adams, unique from so Truly. We're still get those cool beers. That you oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now we'll also collaborate on different products. You know, we're talking about a Sam Adams dogfish collaboration today. Someday there might be a Sam, a dogfish Angry Orchard collaboration. Or some folks might not realize, but we own uh, Concrete Beach Brewery in Miami. We own Coney Island Brewery in New York. We own... Uh, Angel City Brewery, which is kicking ass in, in L.A. So the opportunities for collaborations at different locations between Boston Beer, Dogfish, etc. is kind of exponentially awesome now. You know people out there are going to say that sounds kind of like AB and Bev territory. <laughs> Except collectively, <laughs> all of Boston Beer collectively has 2% of domestic market share. And the sad fact is at 2% domestic beer market share, we are the biggest indie American craft brewery up against the same Goliaths we were up against, uh, you know, for the last 20 years. Anheuser Busch InBev controls about 50 or 48 percent of our country's beer market, even though they're, you know, a, a Belgian-based company. Molson Coors controls 20-something percent. So we're still a, a David up against Goliaths, even though uh, we're a little bit bigger than we were a year ago. All right. Well, before I let you go here, real quick. Our company is living a stout life, yes. and so for us, that's kind of a double meaning of, yeah, we love great beer, yep. dogfish head, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we live an intentional life, too. But uh, what would Sam's idea, what is your perfect living a stout life for you? Not for us, for you. Oh, I would just say making sure you never let the tail of money wag the dog of inspiration, go on a creative journey, try and do something different, not do something derivative. Surround yourself with really smart people who have complementary skill sets and learn from each other, have fun, try to get out in nature. You know, what we make is built on beautiful na natural ingredients. And as you guys on your uh, journey are spending great time mixing your love of nature and beer, similarly, you know, I make sure I get on a paddleboard or go for a bike ride every day to just kind of uh, say namaste to nature because we're lucky to make something from natural, natural ingredients that we make our living doing. Well, and you're one of the few people that can say, I, I made that namaste that I drink while I'm namasteing with nature. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we got that going for us. <laughs> Had to throw it in there. Had to throw it in there. All right, well, Sam, thanks for talking to us today. And, yeah, uh, good luck on your guys' journey. We'll see you down the road. We have new conversations every week. Be sure to subscribe to Living a Stout Life so you don't miss out. Sam says there's still a David to A.B. and Bev's Goliath. Do you still consider them craft? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or by following the link in the description.